Tina from hauntedflower.com and hauntedflowerreviews.com and this week I'm doing something a little bit different. You may remember recently I did a DVD review for Fringe Season 1. On my site for a long time I've been doing written reviews uh, for DVDs and things that are sent to me by the studios. But I think that the videos are just more fun and the feedback I got was that people really enjoyed the videos so here I am and I'm just going to do all my DVD reviews for the week in one video. So this week we have White Collar Season 2, Burn Notice Season 4, and In Her Skin, a movie. Let's just start with Burn Notice because it turned out to be the one I enjoyed the most this week. Burn Notice is just a light, fluffy, brain candy kind of show. You can just sit down after a long day, watch it. You really don't have to think very hard because this guy is good enough to explain everything to you in voiceover. It doesn't mean that it's less interesting or exciting, I'm just saying it requires little effort to watch. The premise of the series is that the character Michael Weston, who's played by Jeffrey Donovan, was a spy and he got burned, so that means that he has been left in Miami to just kind of figure things out on his own with no communication from his company or anything like that. And he's there with his girlfriend, who is Fiona, played by Gabrielle Anwar, and an old friend who used to inform on him to the FBI, Bruce Campbell, who plays Sam Axe. I sound like I'm just quoting the intro, but the intro of every show goes through this whole thing to introduce the characters, so I don't even need to tell you this part. And his mom is here, too. Through a lot of the series, the character has been trying to figure out who burned him, going after those people, but there are lots of odd jobs along the way, situations where he tries to help people, stop drug dealers, stop people who are screwing over charitable businesses, whatever. They get to do lots of explosions, lots of car chases. In this season, Michael managed to burn another spy, a guy named Jesse. And he's there for most of the season, uh, working with them. He doesn't know that he was burned by Michael. And, so and it's a really exciting season overall. I liked it. I enjoyed it. And for extra features, you get deleted scenes, Sam Axe's Guide to Ladies, and Burn Notice roasts the show White Collar, and then White Collar roasts the show Burn Notice. Basically, a lot of the same people kind of work on both shows, producers, writers, and whatnot. And so they're poking fun at each other for, oh, he's always narrating things. Oh, they're always in suits and all they do is talk to each other. You also get to see stunts, audio commentary, and a gag reel. Moving on to White Collar Season 2. White Collar is a show about an FBI agent, Peter Burke, who's played by Tim Decay, who enlists the help of a criminal informant, Neil Caffrey, who used to be like a forger, art thief, etc., and he is basically doing his time with an ankle bracelet to help the FBI. And he's played by Matt Bomer. Now, when I watched season one of this series, my review basically went over the fact of how much this series relies on these two blue eyes right here. I mean, there's just no denying the guy is ridiculously good looking. Ridiculously good looking and charming. And that's what this show still relies on quite a bit but they care a little bit more about the other relationships here. The FBI agent is married to Elizabeth Burke, who's played by Tiffany Amber Thiessen, whom you might remember from Saved by the Bell. She still looks quite lovely, and she serves little purpose in the series other than to remind us that the FBI agent is a family man with a wife and dog waiting for him back home. So whenever he is in trouble, like kidnapped or has to go under the radar or something, that she will be at home worrying about him and having emotional scenes. You also have a strange oddball guy with glasses, Willie Garson plays Mozzie, and he's basically a helpful sidekick that shows up with information and likes to solve codes. Most of this season, they try and solve the mystery of a music box to find out why his girlfriend Kate died in an airplane explosion at the end of season one. I can't say I care too much, not that I was emotionally invested in these characters at all, it's just these people really do just spend most of their time talking to each other. They talk about their feelings, they talk about music boxes and art, and eh, it's okay. I think the most interesting part of the series from season one was seeing the great lengths people will go through to counterfeit or to copy something, and it was kind of cool to see how that works. But here you really don't even focus on that crime aspect as much because they worry so much about, oh, he's in danger, oh, the FBI agent's in danger, someone's in danger, no. The season was okay. I think that uh, they kind of 
tried to throw in some things at the end where he was kind of with one girl, kind of with another girl, screwed it up by the end of the season. And it does end on a little bit of a aha moment that would have made me more excited for season three because he goes to a warehouse and there's something in the warehouse that's very exciting to him. In Her Skin is a movie from Australia. And what made me want to review it was that it stars Guy Pearce, Miranda Otto, Sam Neill, and uh, Ruth Bradley, whom I didn't know, but is really pretty amazing in this. It's the story of a young girl who is a fantastic dancer goes missing. Her parents are very worried about her, and the police aren't really helping them search. And it turns out the girl who lived across the street from them, who used to babysit, kidnapped her, and killed her. It's based on a true story, and it is so... The story is so awful. I mean... I think the movie is well made, but this was the hardest thing I watched this week by far. Guy Pearce and Miranda Otto are the parents, and they spend a lot of time going back and forth between, I don't think she's dead, I don't feel it, to crying, ah, she's dead! And they're really just pretty gut-wrenching. Ruth Bradley plays the girl who kidnaps the dancer, and oh my gosh, her character is so, so complex and depressed and hates herself so much. She writes herself these letters. She's freaking out all the time. She must have been an absolute pill to her parents to raise. It's horrible. I don't like this girl, yet I feel pity for her. And Sam Neill is Ruth Bradley's father in this. Uh, he wants to care about his daughter, but she's so difficult to communicate with and take care of, and she's so needy. It occasionally gets a little too artistic for its own good. There are sequences where you just hear, <sighs> like, breathing over the movie. It also has interviews with Guy Pierce, Miranda Otto, and Sam Neill. It has a trailer. It has some behind-the-scenes footage showing you dance rehearsal practice, murder rehearsal practice, and there's some deleted scenes. Disturbing to watch. Know what you're getting into. I don't really recommend it because it's painful. So those are my DVD reviews this week. I really hope you enjoyed this and enjoyed the format and maybe you got to hear about something new. These all came out on Tuesday the 7th, so they're on Amazon. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me next time for another set of DVDs or a movie in theaters or an anime review. Okay, bye! For more reviews and to find out about free contest giveaways, go to hauntedflowerreviews.com. My reviews are also available as a podcast on iTunes. Search for Haunted Flower Reviews and subscribe and leave us feedback and comments. Our store is hauntedflower.com, where we specialize in fantastic licensed apparel from movies, TV shows, video games, anime, and more. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash hauntedflower and Twitter at haunted underscore flower.